responsibility. So I'm going to let Fareed talk about what we're doing um, in that arena. Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, like we mentioned, we have developed a new GUI, completely new comprehensive GUI uh, in front of FreeStore. And part of that GUI is actually adding intelligent uh, predictive analytics into that engine. And, uh, and the GUI now and, and the, uh, uh, the uh, predictive analytics is actually cloud-based. So the one that we're going to be showing you is actually running in Amazon as a VM. And then we also have capabilities that for those companies who are willing to sign up, we can actually share that information so that the predictive anal analytics becomes more and more precise because you get more samples from different companies. You, you have an option to, to completely say, no, I don't want my information shared, which is fine. But it's all cloud-based, it's multi-tenant, and uh, it provides uh, a predictive analytics, basically. Um, I think, in the interest of time, we should we should jump into the demo and, and show it. To yeah, them. that 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 would but, that yeah. would be great. You know, one of the things you know, you, you saw how we have our management server. Um, so you don't have my glasses here. You saw how we have our management server. It could be a VM or a physical machine. You know, with the new analytics platform, we can now extrapolate that now and put that out in the cloud. So, example, if I'm a service provider. Right? And I've got multiple data centers that I'm managing. I don't have to now manage and monitor from a single location. I can put it in the cloud and now manage across all of my storage infrastructure, not that particular set of storage resources or just that storage site. Right? Sorry, put, put what in the cloud? Your free store management server running in? Right. So what we're going to show you, what we are showing you here is something that we were releasing in, in early 2016. And you can run this as a VM within your data center or you can run it as a VM in the cloud. This is actually currently running, as he said, in Amazon. It is connected to storage uh, here, I believe, some here and some in New York, correct? Yes. So, so some actually here in San Jose and some in New York. It's running on an Amazon server in the cloud. <laughs> so and is there so a private network from, Am from the data centers, the private data centers into Amazon or? Right, so we, we use it. It's not a private network into, it's just, it's just over HTTP basically. Okay, so, so do the, free store then storage servers talk out to Amazon and then a secure tunnel back to manage it or? Uh, through APIs, yes, uh, REST APIs. Okay. Correct. Yeah, but it's not like you are offering, um, we have to put the, the, the management server in, in the cloud. It's not <coughs> like you have. Uh, I'm not running this as a service, correct. You would have yeah, to sign okay. up, load it, you know, get your server, load it and, yeah, and yeah. go, okay. correct. Just like, it's, just imagine instead of setting up a VM and loading us on a VM, you're just setting up a VM on Amazon and, and yes. loading it the same way. Clear. So basically what you're looking at here is, is the uh, management server and, and the GUI front end that we are developing. And like Tim was saying, it's, it's going to be available pretty soon. So here uh, you have uh, different tabs on top. Uh, we have, uh, I'm not, uh, hold on. So Oops, you deleted it, but that's okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. So here uh, we have uh, different tabs on top and you can create more tabs. Each one of these uh, squares that you see here, it's actually a widget. So you can actually go and customize this screen for yourself and uh, have the information that you want on top as a widget. And then here uh, you have the, the capability to actually go in and, and, and dig uh, deeper into, uh, in, into what's behind each, each one of these. Widgets. One of the things that we do with the new interface is, you know, everything is role based. So as you sign up, you know, and you've got different roles and different administrators with different, you know, rights and capabilities, each user is allowed to create their own dashboard. So you can have multiple dashboards by user, you could have it by site, you could have it by workload. We give you the flexibility to create dashboards based on what your environment is, who your users are, and everything is relative to the way that you want to set that up. So you mentioned uh, role-based access control. Does that integrate with Active Directory or is it local authentication only? How does that work? So when we, re when we uh, release this, we will integrate with things like you know, uh, LDAP, Active Directory. So you don't currently, it's on the roadmap Correct. for when it comes this, out for This platform gives us the ability to then go do that, right? right. right. Okay. That is correct. Now this is a view of the, of, of the dashboard and like I said, it's totally custom customizable. You can put your own widget up here. Then we have, uh, a uh, monitoring. Go to overview first. Uh, go to overview. Mm -hmm. So monitoring overview. Uh, here you see an active dashboard, which, which shows you exactly which uh, storage devices you're you're uh, uh, managing. You know what the the uh, 
write and read uh, ratios are, what kind of performance you're getting out of them, and then you can actually dig get deeper again. You know, so if you if you uh, click on the eye over here, you know, you flip it around, and then you can see exactly uh, more details around that specific. Uh, storage device. What's really unique about this is you now no longer have to go physical resource by physical resource to see what's going on. We can show you, we can take all the physical storage that we're pulling in and managing and we can show you what's going on, what's the performance, what's, how much capacity is there, what is that of that capacity is used, what is available, is it thin provisioned, is it thick provisioned, is there an issue with that storage box. While I can't go physically manage that VNX server, I mean that VNX array, excuse me, Right? I can show you that, that what's going on with it from a single pane of glass along with everything else in my environment. Do you want a physical view? What are all my physical storage assets that I'm managing? Or do I want a virtual view? What are all the virtual storage resources that I've provisioned? Or do I want a client view? Here's all the clients that I'm now serving storage to, protecting, managing, whatever services are going on. So remember that three tiers that we'd show you. Because we're that middleware tier, we're abstracted from the, f the back end storage and the front end servers and, and clients, right? The OS, the applications. We can show you a view, however, what's relevant to what your environment is, what your role is, or what you need. So you've got a view across all the storage. If I deploy a VMDK, is that spread across multiple storage, back end storage, or not? So it's whatever storage, back end storage that you've pulled in or managing through the free store platform. Hey, yeah. Say if I have one an, VMDK? Well, if I've got have a single a v VM, one VMDK, but I've got EMC and NetApp storage behind, right. will that VMDK be spread across both, or is there a sort of one to one mapping from a data store on free store to the back end storage? Uh, you, can, you can actually pick and choose. If, if you want to map it, map it across, you can set it up that way. If you want it on one device, you can pin it to that so one So you could device. create a RAID 5 array, just to use a bit of a silly yes. example, across HP, EMC, NetApp, right. and right. IBM, for example. Yeah, you theoretically, I'm not sure you would, but theoretically it is possible. You're going into my policy. That's where you get messed yeah, up. Yeah, you, you get me mad now. <laughs> <laughs> then present that as a single LUN. Yes, you absolutely could. Right, right. So even they, they may but have the, different the, performance characteristics. It could. It's going yes. to go obviously to the lowest common denominator. Then you get into your whole internal policies. Is that a good idea or not? I mean, that's no point to it because you've already paid for protection at the array level. Possibly. So well, maybe you don't want to renew the license. Yeah, but <laughs> it, was, it was more of a question of you've got the single flexible pool. How much are you tied to the individual storage You're behind not. it? We're abstracted because from it. I was just looking at that as an example. My free store LUN is, is running out of space. I can, Grab uh, it from those VMs else. are running on, on the IBM storage, I can then add another shelf onto the yeah. Hitachi storage and just, right. just exp the, the VM, part of the VM's rights would then happen on that. When you create your virtual storage pools within, within um, free store, you know, we give you the ability to go tag attributes, such as you know, what kind of storage is behind it, what kind of performance is behind it, what kind of capabilities are on the inherent storage array itself or not, right? What's the price of it? So you can look at it and say, hey, maybe I've got you know, red, yellow, green, or, or, or platinum, gold, silver, whatever you want to call it, right? And make sure that when you go provision storage to whatever application or workload or OS, right, you're pulling from the right class of storage that's relevant to that. So we try to give you tools to be able to tag and add some intelligence in it right, for you so that you can better manage it so that hopefully you aren't saying, hey, you know what, you know, I'm running this Oracle rack and now I'm going to go put it on this you know, old you know, legacy you know, Sorry, uh, iSCSI in box. A, in a way, Sorry. You've, got, you, you've got the lowest common denominator, um, so you can abstract all of that, but still surface up the important features. Because the, the reason you bought the original IBM or original NetApp or, or EMC array was for particular features that you may right. want. And you, you don't want to have a lowest common denominator that can only use the base function of each thing. So you, you can still present that. We give you the intelligence and allow to leverage that or choose not to. We give you that flexibility. Because another thought I've got, and I, it's so honestly, good. this looks far too good to possibly be true, and I'm <laughs> sure people are wondering uh, how is Go this. Go back and say what you were just saying there about surfacing up the capability. What did you mean by that? I, sure I meant, well, I meant if you, it, you, you're possibly buying an EMC array for particular functionality like, that you wanted. It, what, what sort of example? Well, performance characteristics okay, for you know drive layouts or that or that kind of thing so yeah that would be something if you're going to then abstract that away you don't want to lose the capability of having that kind of 
you know, particular drive. I was thinking if you were thinking about things like snapshots and replication. Well, obviously, that would that's not going to get surfaced up through the. No, but you this. don't want to because you want no, FreeStore to do the snapshots, yeah, replication, absolutely. DR, all of that. So sorry, yeah, back to the other thing. Th this does, this does look a bit too good to be true, and I'm sure looking at other people, they're going to go, this, this is crazy. There's no way you can do all of this. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what we can do. What am I, what am I missing out? And I'm, I know you're not going to tell me the things that it's not going to do, but yeah, I mean, it's, it I'm does seem impressive. I'm not going to set your policies for you. <laughs> I'm not going to, well, I'm going to take that. I'm not going to define your policies for you. You're going to have to set those for yourself. Because people have got the, their alert engines going. Sure. What, uh, how am I being caught out on this? So, right, it's, it's a very, very powerful engine. And you can use it to do a lot of things. We need to make sure that as we engage our customers, our service providers, our partners, what's important, and let's go address that, because right, it can get chaotic in a real big hurry. But what our goal is, is to help you begin to look at how can I eliminate some of those silos, begin to take some of that complexity and give you smarter tools, more cost effective and efficient tools to better manage your environment. You can see here is you know, the, 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 the various storage resource pools that I'm now provisioning and allocating up through free store. Pool by pool, right? Resource by resource. Here's a summary. What's going on? What alerts do I have? What, what physical devices? How many virtual? What storage pools? It, it gives you all the information related to that storage pool. I can look at, here's what my capacity is. I might be making, this storage pool tells me that I'm actually made up of four physical, I'm using four physical devices to create this storage pool. Yet, Here's the aggregate view across that entire pool. So can you go back a second? Click on performance. So just go back a second. Yes. Right. OK. So I want to add a new SAN or whatever it may be to my free store storage pool. OK. Yes. How does it understand the capabilities of that particular SAN? Does it basically send out some sensors and do some tests, basically, to find out the underlying performance? Is it manual configuration? So, how if, does it know if that's a little capable? We'll go in and we'll talk to it. If it's REST capable, we'll go in and talk to it and figure out what's there. If it's not that capable, then we're going to allow the storage administrator to go identify what those capabilities are when they establish that storage pool. Okay, but obviously that environment though, is probably serving other workloads at the time, and Possibly. therefore you really aren't going to know the true capabilities of that particular storage environment yeah. because it's... I mean, if, if what you're asking is, are we constantly pulling these? Yeah. We're not doing that right, right now. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Uh, that, that's, that's, well, this is version one still. Okay. So we, we, we still have some ways to go. That could be a possibility. Yeah. You know, that, that could be a roadmap item for us to actually yeah, so go and pull. We, we do pull can, on a somewhat you, of an interval. Can you also publish the capabilities of the, the, um, the LUNs you're presenting uh, through to vSphere? Uh, through the REST API, REST API, we could absolutely expose it. Okay, uh, so I don't know that I've got a direct in, you know, plug in at the moment to do that, but I mean, we certainly integrate with vCenter. Um, I'd have to ask Iklis on that. Yeah, I, I don't know. For example, if, if I mark a little, uh, so you, you present to me a LUN that is replicated. Mm -hmm. Then in my vSphere environment, when I storage vMotion in VM, I want to make sure that it stays replicated. Yes. So in VMware, I have to know, is it or is it not? Okay, yeah. So from, from that perspective, via, yeah, with through Vasa our vCenter plugin. Or do you use tags? We, we, use, we have a Vasa and VAI. Today, we're still working on vVol integration, vVol. but we've got Vasa and VAI integration already, and I've had that for a while. So it's going to know. But that means if it is only Vasa, then I, as a vSphere administrator, still have to Correct. take the learns and tag them correctly. Correct. Which was just not with this version. Per se an issue, but, but, but just right. To know. You know, you know, right. And as we get to that next iteration, that'll be something that we continue to, to flesh out. Uh, Vivo is. Coming through is the installation role. of this product, then it sounds dreamy. To be fair, <coughs> um, how do I get it installed and to use it as a customer? Oh, yeah, because yeah, you had something on your website about needing professional services, and we, we certainly recommend it. Absolutely, because this is complex when you're talking about aggregating an entire storage environment into a common platform and a set of tools. So you need to understand things like when, when uh, Fareed was talking about it, it's not just a matter of plugging in your storage, right? It's not like you go to your cable box and just plug it in, right? There's a lot of implications. What's your network? What are your workloads? You know, what are your, what are your performance requirements? You know, what are your protection requirements? There's a lot of policy things that you need to understand. There's a lot of workload things that you have to understand. It's just you know incorrectly setting up you know the zoning on your fabric can screw you up, right? 
So, I mean, there's a lot of complexity here. I'm not going to fool anybody by saying it's not. I'm not here to say, hey, you know, install this and it's all going to work. It's got to be configured and implemented correctly. So what does it cost then to get it installed? So we've got uh, a single management server and up to four storage nodes are included in the initial price. Anything beyond that would be additional PS services. Can I just go back and touch on a question that I think um, Craig mentioned earlier? You were talking about performance, I think, Craig, to un understand what the performance of the underlying storage yes. would be. Bearing in mind you're reading and writing from that underlying storage array, mm -hmm. why would you not know what the performance of that underlying storage yeah. is to be able to then do that? Surely that's how you'd do it, wouldn't you? And, and here's a beautiful thing. I can show you what's going on at the performance at the physical layer and at the virtual layer. Right? I can also show you the performance out to the SAN client. So again, we give you between the storage server and the, and the underlying physical storage, as well as from the virtual pool out to the client. We give you both, so both sides of that view. So you can see what's going on. We're doing it, we're pulling it in, in near real time, or we can give you a historical point of view unless you export that and, and put that out. We can even say, hey, if you're gonna set up virtual resources and now provision that, if I'm a service provider and I give you virtual resources and I'm gonna provision that tenant by tenant, you now give the ability to that service provider to show tenant by tenant, what that performance looks like. Are they getting the performance that they're subscribing to? Are they getting the capacity, the protection that they're subscribing to? Yeah, so you may not be able to do it prior to installation, as I think Greg yes. was looking for, but certainly post-installation, you can, comp you can demonstrate what performance each of the gives you that capability. And, and this, this is where it is. Right, yeah. and the, 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 what we see as a, a unique advantage for us is you no longer, I mean, if you go look at, at Pure One Analytics, it's fantastic. Those guys have done some really, really innovative things, right? But that only works on Pure. With FreeStore, I now give you similar type of capabilities across your entire storage infrastructure, not just on that pure storage array. Again, a unique thing that I think we're doing that I have not seen anybody else in the industry do yet. Yeah. Can you I'm tell giving me you heterogeneous analytics. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, a little bit about some of the other services that are on the roadmap? One in particular that I was interested in, and just kind of asking, any thoughts? on encryption. Do you support that today? Are you going to support that in the future? I have customers asking about that. Sure. When we replicate, we encrypt today, right? Um, what I'm not is I don't have encryption at rest today. Okay. Um, that is absolutely something that's on our And uh, we can definitely, you know, we, our plan today is to rely on the storage hardware to do the encryption at rest. Okay. You know, the drive itself. Uh, you know, encryption, again, it's, it's just like uh, FDR is, is costly. Yes. So, uh, you know, it, it can impact our performance, so on and so forth. We have to see how we can intelligently do that if we decide to do it. But at this point, uh, is, you know, we're going to rely on the hardware. Okay, that was one. I guess my other one is kind of around the, the like your costing model. You said it was, I guess, 350 bucks a terabyte or something like that list. Is that right? It's price, correct. Okay, so. It's three cents a gig per month. So is that um, deduped terabyte? In your environment? So here's the beauty. That is all in. If you want to choose to dedupe it, right, you're paying for capacity. We're calling it managed capacity. If you choose to deduplicate, that's now managed capacity. I'm only charging you for the deduped amount of data we're managing. So turning on dedupe makes it cheaper? It makes it more cost effective. Cost effective, but you pay the price on performance because right. of there's always going to be a there's always going to be a penalty on on the performance right you right. can't get around that we can try to mitigate it some but, but no one's going to ever yeah. overcome that completely well that's not true with all products but other products some products you turn on dedupe and it gets faster over time it could it potentially could right because if you dedupe fast enough then it has less to go sort the best, through and I mean, the best right is one you don't have to make that's right. All right. So, and imagine um, now as we go global, we can begin to now take some of that capability and that efficiency and extend it out. Am I going to say, you know, one, you know, non-dedupe versus dedupe is going to be faster, right? Typically, I think it's fair to say for most everybody, non-dedupe is going to be faster than deduped. So, Tim, we, did, we didn't have we looked at the cloud stuff to see how you integrate that. Did we really talk about that? Because that seems to be like a big so, gap we didn't. Discuss. So, you, uh, so you know, let's uh, let's just show a couple of monitoring things here, and then move to the cloud, sure. and then wrap it up. So, okay. uh, so what I wanted to actually show here is the analytics, because there were quite a few questions there. We have an analytics it's, tab over here. Do you want to go to the capacity prediction? Uh, right there, yeah, on that on that tab down. Uh, it's right here. Number of storage products. Click, click there. Yeah. No, just click down. All right. Okay. 
capacity prediction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so here is is you know the the analytics that we were talking about and the prediction, the capacity prediction that you could make based on the existing uh, existing history that uh, we keep within this tool and the feed that we get from. Uh, you know, the appliances that we have. No, well, not the appliance, but the software, I'm sorry. So, you know, we can actually, uh, you know, give you a curve of how we think your capacity will grow over time. Right, so again. Can you export that data? Now, pardon? Can you export that data? You absolutely can. So you can do a, a custom report or, you know, it gives you the ability to go um, now export that um, as a CSV, you know, dump it out as a PDF, as a CSV, put it in Excel. Um, whatever you want to go do. You can't get it out in Excel though. Absolutely. And again, you can either do that in real time or for a fixed period of time, depending on how you choose to look at it. One of the unique things here, right? We can look at capacity. We can show you what this capacity trend is by your physical storage, by your virtual storage, or by your clients, right? By the, by the workload that you provision by your clients. So again, you're giving IT guys, they don't have to go now array by array and calculate and figure that out. We can aggregate it and give them a real time view of what it is so they can understand, hey, what's used, what's free, when, based on current consumption rates, when am I gonna run out, when do I need to go add more? 